Hi, good morning. In the previous session, we discussed about uh, liquidity analysis of a company, liquidity analysis, in which we discussed about uh, the various ratios which we use to understand the liquidity position of a company. Uh, we discussed about working capital. We discussed about uh, the some ratios like current ratio, asset test ratio, cash ratio, cash flow ratio, and uh, we even discussed about networking capital ratio. Okay. Um, today we'll discuss about the efficiency analysis of a company. Effic efficiency analysis. Efficiency means how productive our company's operations are. How productive our company's operations are. How are we deducting? How are we, you know, uh, selling our goods? How are we selling our goods? How are we collecting credit sales? How are we paying uh, 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 our suppliers? So we deal with the complete efficiency of sales department, collection department, and the efficient usage of their resources like assets. Um, these ratios to check efficiency of a company operations are called as activity ratios. That's the reason why this analysis is also known as activity analysis or efficiency analysis. In efficiency analysis, the main, main uh, concentration will be like how the inventory is sold, how many days it takes for us to sell the goods. Say we sold goods on credit. The credit sales will become accounts receivable. Means what? Inventory is now converted back into accounts receivable. Inventory is a stock item which is converted back into accounts receivable. So how many days, say for example, we took 30 days to find a customer. Means the inventory was in our warehouse for 30 days. After 30 days, we are all we are able to find a customer. But the customer asked us 45 days credit. I can only pay after 45 days from today. Yes, we sold. We sold with a 45 days credit period. So 45 days. Forty-five days. Thirty day, thirty days. The inventory was in the warehouse. At last, we found a customer. We sold goods. So the goods moved to customer's place and has become accounts receivable. But accounts receivable is taking time, for forty-five days time, to convert it into cash. Therefore, this cycle, cycle, the period which is. Uh, the period which is from the inventory conversion to cash conversion is 30 plus 45. 75 days I took from the day of purchase. From the day of purchase of this inventory, it took 75 days to see in the form of cash. So inventory is becoming cash in 75 days time. This cycle is called as operating cycle. Operating cycle is the time period in which inventory is converted into cash. Inventory is not directly converted into cash in the case of credit sale. Inventory is converted into credit sales in how many days? 30 days. So 30 days is inventory conversion period into sales and 45 days is accounts receivable conversion period into cash so it was inventory earlier okay after 30 days we sold goods on credit so accounts receivable took place on the day on this day so inventory conversion period is 30 days inventory to accounts receivable. Accounts receivable is converted back into cash 
in 45 days. So the, say, the, the, days, the days receivable in outstanding, the days receivable, number of days receivable in outstanding is 45 days. So we are able to see directly inventory into cash in 75 days time, which is called operating cycle. Operating cycle is a time in which the inventory is converted into cash operating cycle okay but what about accounts payable or supplier or supplier sold goods to us we have to make him happy okay we have to make him happy by paying on time where do you get this money from this money has to be collected from selling the inventory collecting from receivable and you pay him on time say for example he gives you 90 days credit period you can pay me in 90 days are you able to pay him 90 days yes if i sell goods within 30 days from the day i purchase and if i collect my credit sale money in 45 days i i, I take 75 days to convert the inventory purchase from my supplier into cash okay in 75 days i'll be easily to pay i'll be easily paying the this amount in 90 days maybe 76th day or 78th day so that i may get some discount also for paying early this is a good sign this is a good sign but what happens if the supplier gives you 60 days credit and you sell the goods in 30 days you sell or you collect money in 45 days uh, and the total cash is in on 75th day now by the time customer is in overdue by 15 days for the last 15 days the supplier is calling us for the payment because the credit period was given only 60 days so this is what we we need to show the efficiency when supplier gives you 60 days you cannot wait for 30 days to find a customer you will have to expedite it you will have to expedite it speed up issue efficiency in selling the goods that you may have to sell the goods in 10 days time from the date of purchase likewise you have to you, you should not you know delay in uh, collecting the money okay so you'll have to be very smart in collecting money don't wait for 45 days give 30 days credit so you need to follow these numbers to, to have the smooth flow of your operations. Else there will be disturbance in the payment, in the collection, etc. So how do you find this 30 days, 45 days and 60 days? Okay, we'll use some formulae to find out these days. Overall, our topic today uh, uh, will be based on these calculations how inventory is converted into cash, uh, credit sales, how credit sales are collected in uh, and uh, how many days it took and how we are able to pay our supplier. We'll be dealing with uh, uh, around 10 formulae today. One is inventory conversion, then accounts receivable conversion, then accounts payable conversion. And now here, uh, 30 days, uh, 30 days inventory period, 45 days account accessible period say for example supplier gives you 90 days credit okay 90 days credit minus 90 days this is the collection period from inventory to cash and this is the payment period so 35 30 plus 45 we call it as operating cycle okay minus suppliers money suppliers days will give you cash conversion cycle see 75 days you received cash in and you still have 90 days credit time here and still you have 15 days time to 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 pay him back so it is minus 15 this is called cash conversion cycle cash conversion cycle
If cash conversion cycle is negative, it means that we are safe. Cash is with us, but due date is still there. If the cash conversion is, you know, positive like 60 days, 30 plus 45 minus 60 days, you will get positive 15 days. It means that your supplier payment is overdue, which is bad. Because supplier won't be happy if you don't pay him on time. Okay, so this need to be monitored from time to time. Yeah, so here now let us discuss that how the inventory ratio is to be calculated. What is inventory ratio? Inventory ratio is inventory turnover ratio is a time period in which the inventory means goods will become credit sales. How many days it is taking to convert this inventory into sales? More days, more loss. Why? Because you have to store this inventory in the warehouse. There may be accidents, there may be theft, the goods may become deteriorated, outdated, etc. etc. We have to make this cycle faster and efficient to have them in credit sales. So we calculate uh, uh, inventory turnover ratio by using the formula cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. You can write a formula cost of goods sold divided by average inventory. Remember cost of goods sold you get from income statement. And average inventory, you will get it from balance sheet, that is statement of financial position. Now onwards, you should have a standard rule that if any income statement item is expressed in balance sheet item, the balance sheet item is to be averaged. So always you will have denominator average. Average means beginning amount plus ending amount divided by two. Beginning amount okay plus ending amount divided by two so always have a rule that when income statement item is expressed in terms of the balance sheet item the balance sheet item is to be averaged so in the denominator you will find average that is standard rule now say for example now we have sales sales 5 million cost of goods sold say 3 million this is from income statement you have a gross profit of how much 2 million sales minus cost of goods sold gross profit in the balance sheet we have current assets in current assets cash balances marketable balances marketable securities accounts receivable inventory Inventory, say for example, 2016, 2015, two year balance sheets are given. Okay, this is 2016 column and this is 2015 column. Inventory, we have, say for example, 300,000 this year, 200,000 last year. I'm ignoring triple zero. Okay, so use these amounts in the formula. What is cost of goods sold given here? 300,000. Or 3 million okay 3 million from the income statement what uh, just now we discussed any income statement item is expressed in terms of balance sheet items balance sheet items are to be averaged okay so we need to calculate average of this like 300 plus 200 divided by 2 equals to 500 divided by 2 that is 250 so you'll be using your 250 all activity ratios remember are to be expressed in times and you know days so 3 3 million divided by 250000 will give us 12 times 
means our inventory is converted into credit sales in 12 times so in a year in a year it will be converted into sales 12 times this cycle will take place 12 times it depends upon the nature of the industry it depends upon the nature of the industry say for example in a, a retail industry like you know food items food items 12 times in a year no it won't happen in food items we will have to make out around 180 times a 180 times a year why every two days the food items are to be sold like vegetables fruits and all whereas electronic goods may be in a, a hundred times hundred times means maybe around three days or four days you may be selling it but you you have a vehicle showroom car showroom it may take 10 to 15 days time okay 10 to 15 days means around 25 times a year so depending upon the nature of the business you have this you know uh, inventory turnover ratio we'll have to see the industry average okay what our competitor or what average it should be if if you are if you are dealing with some electronic goods and it is 12 time means your inventory is lying there in the warehouse for long period you cannot hold the inventory for long period in your showroom the expenses will go up that's the reason why more times is good more times of this ratio is good so you may not get a proper meaning when the ratio is expressed in times unless you convert this into days now we got an answer here 12 times i'm just reusing the same number in the next calculation that is the number of days sales in inventory okay you said inventory turnover ratio is 12 times this is happening 12 times a year 12 times a year okay but can you tell me in number of days yes number of days can be calculated using the formula 365 or 360 or 300 let me explain about this and inventory turnover just now what you calculated in the previous calculation so 365 360 or 300 divided by inventory turnover will give you the number of days 365 360 300 what is this see 365 a calendar number of days okay mostly the number of days to be assumed in the formula will be given in your exam okay but uh, if nothing is given you can take 365 days 360 means assuming that every month has even 30 days evenly so 30 days times 12 300 days means number of business days calendar days are different from business days we are not open on say for example sunday so why should i consider when i do not open my showroom on sunday how can i expect sales on sunday okay like uh, some uh, holidays national holidays festivals etc on the days on those days we do not open our business so we do not expect the sales so on an average business days means we expect 25 days a month times 12 okay that is 300 when you op when you use business days the ratio will be lower as compared to all the other ratios the ratio will be lower why you because numerator is less as compared to 365 okay say for example we are considering 360 so 360 divided by 12 the previous calculation answer inventory turnover now you should express this answer in days means your inventory is sold in 30 days time so from inventory you see in the form of sales in 30 days so inventory is becoming sales in 30 days time so next time how to improve this means you have to reduce you have to sell your goods in 20 days time 18 days time 17 days time 
by having good relationship with the customers okay by having brand for your products make your goods available to the customers okay so how to improve this that you need to work on it so at the moment we understand that once we purchase the inventory it will be sold in 30 days time now the next ratio what we need to understand is okay anyway we sold goods but how fast we are collecting money that is also important right we sold goods we understand from the previous calculation that it took 30 days to you know sell the goods this is called inventory conversion period day sales in inventory now this amount credit sale amount is to be collected right this credit sale amount is to be collected from the credit sale day to the collection date how many days are there okay so first of all we should see that how many times the cash is collected here then how many days it is taking inventory turnover ratio we used cost of goods sold divided by average average inventory in account accessible turnover ratio we should use credit sales please remember credit sales sometimes you may get total sales in the income statement total sales and somewhere in the corner you may give the company sells 10 percent on cash so immediately whatever the sale is given you should calculate only 90 percent of sales here because for cash sales you no need to worry about you receive cash immediately what we are talking about is how fast how best okay we are collecting our credit sale money how fast we are collecting our credit sale money now let me give an example here num you know annualized credit sales that we find from income statement sales say 5 million okay this is from income statement as i told you last time that any income statement item is expressed on balance sheet item balance sheet items are to be averaged now in the balance sheet under current asset we have cash bank balances marketable securities accounts receivable inventory and prepayment now we have inventory inventory 2016 2015 2016 inventory we used there in the inventory turnover ratio now let us work on accounts receivable accounts receivable we have say for example 700000 here last year we had 800000 so to calculate the average accounts receivable we need to take the beginning amount 800 last year amount is beginning amount plus current year amount 700 divided by 2 this gives you 1500 divided by 2 750 this is the average accounts receivable we need to record in the formula say this company is selling 20 percent for cash so the cash sales are already included here we have to convert back into credit sale so credit sale equals to total sales minus cash sales so can i write 5000 5 million times 80 percent because 20 percent is cash sale right okay so 4 million divided by 750 4 million credit sales divided by 750 average accounts receivable will give you 5.33 times this turnover ratios are to be explained uh, expressed in either times or days so accounts receivable turnover ratio is expressed in times so we are collecting money in 5.33 times each year let us convert this into number of days number of days okay sales in receivables or you can say accounts receivable conversion period for this the formula what we use is 365 or 360 or 300 divided by accounts receivable turnover ratio ARTR so let me take 360 360 over 
account accessible turnover ratio 5.333 360 over 5.333 will give you 67.5 days i will take 68 days okay so what do we understand from inventory days to sales we took 30 days as per the previous calculation and from account accessible days to cash it takes 68 days okay account accessible to cash it is taking 68 days this is inventory inventory to receivable 30 days receivable to cash 68 days 68 days if you if you reduce it by using your effective you know collection team okay and by offering some discounts and all it will go healthily otherwise your collection team is not so efficient and they are not calling on time collecting on time it has gone to 70 days 75 days you will lose interest you will lose interest income because you will be just so you, you are selling the goods but all the receivables are in the all receivables are in the market clear so you'll have to improve it now operating cycle operating cycle is the time period which takes from the day we have the inventory in our warehouse until you collect money as per the previous as per the previous uh, numbers we have you know inventory conversion period this is called inventory conversion period number of days sales in inventory what that was 30 it was inventory now uh, it has become account accessible now this amount is collected as per the previous calculation in 68 days this is called number of days sales in outstanding dso so inventory conversion period plus dso will give you operating cycle operating cycle so the formula for operating cycle is number of days sales in inventory number of plus number of days receivables in sales number of days receivable in sales equals to operating cycle then now let us work on accounts payable turnover ratio accounts payable turnover ratio mean we have a supplier who is giving us goods okay fine this inventory which we received from the supplier is sold in 30 days time but it has formed it has formed as accounts receivable it was inventory now it has become accounts receivable and as per the previous calculation we we converted this amount into 68 days okay now it is in the form of cash what number of days accounts payable or supplier gave us that is important say he gave us 120 days huh? 120 days credit so whether this is correctly paid on time or not let us reconcile here equals to inventory inventory was sold in 30 days and accounts receivable collected money in 68 days total 98 98 and our supplier is giving us 120 days we have enough enough time enough time to pay him means cash is in hand 22 days before the supplier bill becomes due okay so this is in our hand means the answer should be in negative 98 minus 120 you will give you will get negative negative amount this is called cash conversion cycle if cash conversion cycle is uh, in negative it means that we are ready with cash now let us discuss how you get this 120 days accounts payable turnover ratio first of all how many times we are paying our supplier 
so in this case you need to calculate you need to calculate credit purchases to to find out the accounts payable turnover ratio credit purchases credit purchases for this you need to use a formula cost of goods sold equals to cost of goods sold equals to opening inventory that is beginning inventory beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory ending inventory cost of goods sold equals to beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory sometimes purchases readily may not be available in the question in that case you should use this formula please where do you get cost of goods sold in the income statement where do you get beginning inventory balance sheet last year item where do you get ending inventory balance sheet current year item okay say in my previous example i gave you income statement sales 5 million cost of goods sold 3 million giving you a gross profit of 2 million now we have cost of goods sold balance sheet current assets current assets okay c m a i inventory inventory 2016 say we have 300 last year 200 now you can find out from this how cost of goods sold what is the amount 3 million equals to beginning inventory 200 this is beginning inventory because this column is for 2015 and this is for 16 2015 ending inventory becomes 2016 beginning inventory plus we don't know purchases let me write as purchases minus ending inventory okay so the amounts come here 3000 minus 200 plus 300 equals to purchases therefore purchase equals to 3100 so you have credit purchase here if these are all credit purchase you should take full amount and accounts payable where do you get accounts payable you should get this amount in a, a balance sheet under current liabilities current liabilities balance sheet you will have the amounts on you know uh, uh, balance sheet current liabilities say 2016 2015 like this current liabilities accounts payable maybe here we have uh, 180 and last year 160 so you have to take the average of this total now you have credit purchases 3100 take the average of this 180 plus 160 divided by 2 340 divided by 2 will give you 170 so 3100 divided by 170 that gives you 18.23 18.23 times so accounts payable turnover ratio gives us 18.23 times now let us see that how many days the supplier is giving us by calculating days days the payable outstanding number of days purchase in payables number of days purchase in payables okay right now number of days purchase in payable equals to the formula include accounts payable divided by average daily purchases or you can use the formula like the same formula 365 better we use the previous formula 365 or 360 or 300 depending upon the information given okay divided by accounts payable turnover ratio that is i will take 360 here 360 over 18.23 360 divided by 18.23 will give you 
how many days here 19.7 but I'll take 20 days 20 days so supplier is giving us 20 days credit okay now let us work on total asset turnover ratio turnover is a term used in the place of sales turnover my company turnover this year is 20 lakhs means what in other words it is 20 lakhs sales the total value of sales I made this year is 20 lakhs or we can say turnover is 20 lakhs so asset total assets turnover ratio total assets where do you find total asset you find in balance sheet turnover sales where do you find in income statement again now income statement item is going to be expressed on balance sheet item therefore your total assets are to be averaged okay what is the essence of this ratio why do we learn this ratio there is a meaning uh, in learning this ratio that how efficiently my assets are used current assets and fixed assets are used to make more sales say for example I have good spacious warehouse to accommodate various goods will help me to make more sales otherwise customer asks for 10 products I have 8 products customer asks for A, B, C I have only A and C no B so customer is disappointed he will not even buy A and C okay I do not have my own vehicles I depend on the transport vehicles so transport vehicles sometimes I may not get so I don't give timely delivery so customers are not happy they don't buy goods from me my sales go down because of this say for example I gathered all the effective assets current assets say I have 2 million and fixed assets say I have 13 million total 15 million assets are there in my company last year we had a current asset of 1 million and fixed assets of 12 million so last year we had 13 million this is year 2015 now this is year 2016 current assets total and fixed asset total now how your sales or this year income statement sales we have 5 million sales this sales effectively are based on how effective assets you have here in your business effective asset means productive assets which will help us to make more sales if you have any ideal assets here like your manager is having a posh car it is nowhere used in improving the sales you have uh, like you have some trucks to give delivery to the customers on time this will be effectively used to make more sales but a costly car parked in front of office does not may uh, it may not give you the improvement in sales you got my point so these assets are to be very effectively used in the business to make sales this is what we are going to find out the total asset turnover ratio how assets are effectively used to make more sales okay uh, carry these numbers 15 million 13 million and 5 million sales in the formula uh, use them in the formula the net sales net sales divided by average total assets in the previous uh, information we know that the net sales are 5 million average total assets average total assets were 15 million this year 13 million last year this will become beginning assets and these are the ending assets so 13 million beginning assets ending value of assets 15 million divided by 2 28 million 
divided by 2 will give you 14 million. So, 14 million. So, you are able to make 5 million sales with 14 million assets. So, it is 0.3, approximately 36. Means, every $1 of asset is helping you to make a 0.36 dollars of sale which is most ineffective use of asset most of the companies like to have like if i give you one dollar of asset how many dollars of sales you make okay how many three five dollars twenty dollars like that they ask you but here it is less than one dollar means we have lots of ideal assets which are not used properly if this is improved next year to say for example or three dollars means these assets are effectively used if the assets are efficiently used we can make more sales otherwise what happens you will have ideal assets ideal assets means which are not uh, performing assets with which you cannot make sales okay the next formula what we are going to see is here um, how how the working capital is used now here fixed asset turnover ratio means in the previous formula total asset turnover ratio formula we learned we learned that how the assets total assets are used to make more sales now here we are going to learn how only fixed assets helping us to make more sales so there's no difference in formula only one thing that we are not considering the current assets okay fixed asset turnover ratio will be using sales divided by average you no know, fixed assets property plant and equipment means fixed assets how effectively our pl property plant and you know equipment are used well say like 5 million and we had say 13 million fixed assets list this year last year 11 million okay so fixed assets current year this much last year this much sales 5 million divided by the total average of this 13 million plus 11 million divided by 2 24 divided by 2 will give you 12 million so 5 million divided by 12 million using fixed assets you are able to make this much sales okay using the fixed assets you are able to make this much sales still i can say that performance is not good why because it is less than 1 0.416 it has to be improved a lot we'll have to see that whether this equipment is effective in making the sales or not or just this equipment has been never been used but it is there in the factory so shall we sell it off okay or this property is idle we have an empty land which will never used which we never used but it is you know dragging our ratio so we may you know discuss that whether this can be sold off if not used to make some cash instead of reducing this ratio so we can take some effective steps to use these assets effectively to improve our sales at the end of the day our intention is to improve this ratio by increasing either sales or investing investigating the uh, idleness of any asset and eliminating the asset this is uh, one formula wherein we discuss about we we check that the efficiency of uh, the fixed assets used in the business to to improve the sales in terms of fixed asset not only this we can also uh, analyze the efficient uses of working capital that you can write a formula working capital turnover ratio working capital turnover ratio tells us that how best we can make sales using effective use effectively using the working capital sales divided by 
average working capital. Working capital. Sales you get from your income statement. 5 million. But working capital, where do you get it from? Working capital. Working capital is the difference between current assets and current liabilities. Okay, so last year working capital and current year working capital. You should see both. Say for example, on balance sheet, we have current assets, current year, last year, say current assets, current liabilities, current year, last year, So you need to find out working capital for two years, 2016. Current assets 2016 minus current, current liabilities of 2016. 3 million minus 1.5 million equals to 1.5 million. 2015. Current assets of 2015 minus current liabilities of 2015. 2 million minus 1,000, 1,200,000 will give you 800,000. Now we want average working capital. Okay. Average working capital equals to this amount plus this amount divided by 2. So average working capital. Beginning working capital plus ending working capital over 2. So 2300 divided by 2 will give you 2150. Now let us use in the formula sales divided by that is 5 million divided by average working capital 2150. So 5 million divided by 2150 gives us 2 million uh, sorry 2.32 means every one dollar of average working capital is able to help us to make 2.3 dollars of sales so we'll have to see that still we can improve our working capital efficiency okay so that we can make it three dollars five dollars means one dollar of working capital is helping us five dollars it was 2.3 dollars last year oh very very good management Okay, taking very efficient steps to improve the sales. Using the same working capital, you are able to make more working capital turnover ratio. Means this average working capital of 2 million is giving you a sale of 6 million, 7 million, 8 million. Means what? You are taking very, very, very efficient steps to improve the sales. So your concentration is always on how efficiently we can use the working capital to make more sales. This is the end of uh, the session for today. Uh, we discussed uh, uh, activity measures, discussing uh, the activity ratios, inventory turnover ratio, inventory days, accounts receivable turnover ratio, accounts receivable days, operating cycle, accounts payable turnover ratio, accounts payable days, cash conversion cycle, total asset turnover ratio, fixed asset turnover ratio, and uh, working capital turnover ratio. Hope you understand and uh, we'll see in the next session and uh, we'll discuss about the solvency analysis. Till then, see you. Bye-bye. Have a nice time.